In a world of cars that have an awful lot of sameness these days, the Swedes still manage to do things differently. Bless their little souls for that. And differently in this V60 as well, because Volvo's got an ambitious suite of connected apps. Let's check it on the road and check it in the cloud as we drive this 15 V60 R Design T6 and check the tech. I just love compact little sport wagons, so I'm predisposed to this car. RV60 is also an R Design, which is going to make you predisposed to it. It's got a great looking, subtle body kit, special 18s on all four wheels, uh, different seats and wheel itself. You've also got a stiffer but still non adaptive sport suspension. And we're looking at a unique LCD instrument panel inside. You better like it, because it's about $46,000 or so base, $1,000 for a convenience package that makes you pay extra for a rear camera and a few other things. The tech package, though, is a steal. Adaptive cruise with low-speed negotiation, forward collision with full braking, pedestrian and bike detection with full braking, and it can read road signs. But then after all that, they leave you out in the cold without blind spot technology, which these guys are known for. That's 900 more. Anyway, that's how we get to 50 grand. Let's see what you get. First thing you notice is the instrument panel. That is one of the cleanest, minimalist out there. It fits in with their mission to reduce driver distraction. It also looks great. That's basically what it looks like all the time with some minor changes you can make to the information, including really stripping it down. I like it a lot. Going to the head unit here, we have our navigation. We've seen this nav before. It's not too unusual. The radio choices include HD radio standard, and then under a separate menu, you find media. You know I'm not crazy about that. That said, you basically got all the choices you'd ever want. Optical disc is still in a Volvo, by the way. Bluetooth streaming and USB and aux are here in the console. Here's an interesting button, the little globe icon. That brings you to a new set of connected services. The apps include simple pedestrian things like finding fuel. You've got glimpse to share your location, pass. Local search, thank you, find something and nav to it. Here is Pandora and RDO and Stitcher and TuneIn. I don't think I've seen a car on the market that has more popular streaming and audio apps in one place. Good work. Wiki locations I can live without. It seems to have almost nothing in it, and it's a haphazard arrangement. And then, of course, there's Yelp. All of this, by the way, controlled by Volvo's controller, which is one of four knobs here, but this is the power knob. This is where you turn to select, push OK, hit that same button to bring up a menu. That's also your back button. I appreciate having hardware back. Now here's where it gets a little bit wonky. You do have voice command for this car for things like phone, built-in navigation, and entertainment. Voice command does not work for these apps. So shockingly for a Volvo, you can work the knob, load the apps, and use text type to enter your preferences or searches while driving. What company is this? They're all about safety, and that's not. Now in terms of connection, I do have my phone paired to this car, but it's not providing the data pipe. It's not a tethered arrangement. It's part of a big trend to give cars their own IP address on the cloud. However, the AT&T provided connection runs from just okay to painfully slow, at least in our tests around San Francisco. As for cost, Volvo and AT&T are still trying to figure that out. Your first six months are on the house, then they'll let you know what it's going to cost. Now, driving this guy is going to be a combination of a PRND shifter with a left side gate. We'll see how that works in a moment. You do have paddles on the wheel. Notice there's no elaborate all-wheel drive controls. There's no real sport mode except putting this guy in sport. I like the minimalist of that keeping up with the design of the IP. Now, because we have a T6, that means we have a 3-liter inline side saddle mounted six-cylinder engine, and it's turbocharged. It's also missing some of the fashionable technologies of today. For example, it does not have direct injection. It's hooked up to a six-speed transmission, not a seven, eight, or nine-speed, as is the fashion today. But it gets the job done. 325 horsepower, 354 pound-feet of torque. Zero to 60 is an admirable 4.9 seconds, critically one-tenth within the five-second mark, which is kind of a special club among cars. The MPG ain't so interesting, perhaps as a result. 19 city, 28 highway, missing key psychological levels on both. Well, the V60 certainly is interesting. Depending on what mode you're in, it's either one of my least or one of my most favorite drivers of the year. Here's what I mean. Leave it in drive, and it's this horrible experience of spooly, loopy power. It gets buried under tall gears, and low RPMs. And when you need power and you stab at it, you get too much of it too late. But then snap it over in sport mode here without even shifting yourself, and everything livens up and comes online. 
that means you're gonna burn more gas. So that's the price you pay to wake this car up, and it's MPG is not that stellar to begin with. The other impression you get from this guy is really solid build. That's a Volvo thing, but particularly here in this nice compact frame. And the ergo in these cars really is great. I mean, nothing is not clearly visible or easily accessible. That also goes for the outward visibility. You got some big chunky headrests, but hit this button and they drop right down. <laughs>